If you want to know how to use video overlays with sound in Ecamm Live, then this video is for you. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name is Alec and in this video we're going to be talking about how you can use overlays in Ecamm Live where they also have sound as well. Now this video came about because I have done a number of videos about how to make animated overlays using Keynote so I'll link to all of those videos in the description and also in the top corner as well. Uh, but I had a question which was uh, if you want to actually have these with sound on in Ecamm Live because as it stands, there are two different ways you can display uh, video overlays in Ecamm Live. Either you can have it be a full window movie that runs as the sort of main body of the scene, in which case it can have sound, but if it is just an overlay over the top of everything else, then if you've just exported the files as a movie from uh, Keynote, then at the moment that cannot have sound. Now the answer to this is by converting them to WebM files. Now this is another one of these videos in my series this week of things that I've learned from Doc Rock because I'm going to show you basically how he told me how to do it. <laughs> so it is just a run through of that process. However, the exact question that I had in my original YouTube video was uh, that uh, this uh, viewer had actually gone through the process of converting the uh, exported Keynote file to a WebM file and uh, was having an issue where at the end there was still a black screen appearing or a black frame if you like at the end of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick and simple way that you can create these WebM files for those of you who want to know that and then there'll be a little bit of troubleshooting just at the end to get to the bottom of where that black frame has come from. So let's first start by showing you exactly what I'm talking about. If I come into my demo mode, in fact first of all let me come into my screen sharing and what I'll do is I'll show you this uh, file that I've created which is a simple animated overlay. Now this is the exact same things as I've shown you how to do in my previous videos so as I said I will uh, link to those. Now uh, if I just click in here and give you a little preview of what this does actually with the preview it's not going to play the sound but uh, there we go it just sort of builds out that lower third and uh, I can actually now show you uh, come out of screen sharing and I'll show you the exact file because if I come into here uh, we've got it over the top there and you can uh, take that one off just for the moment. <laughs> Getting a bit trigger happy there. So what I've done is I've created this overlay. I've exported it from Keynote. As I said, watch the other video to find out exactly how to do that. But if I show you what this video looks like, if I just preview it like this, uh, in fact, it would help if I was in demo mode, wouldn't it? You'd be able to see what I was doing then. <laughs> uh, if I just preview this uh, file, I've just added that little sound. Normally I don't have sound on my lower thirds but I've just added that little sound there as a uh, by way to uh, demonstrate what we're talking about. Now if I just drag this file, this lower third with sound into Ecamm Live and go to drop it onto the scene it will give me two options. One is I can play full screen with audio or the second one is add animated overlay. So if I click full screen with audio that then becomes the actual main dominant uh, part of the scene. When you uh, are setting up scenes in Ecamm Live you can choose between from the source can either be a blank screen, it can be a camera so that's what it was before uh, or it could be screen sharing or it can be a video file so this is basically what we've got it set to now but that's not what we want is it because now uh, that is just taking up the whole screen and my picture is now uh, just a little picture in picture at the bottom corner so that is clearly not what we want. What we want actually is uh, we want the file to be more floating over the top. So if I click here and click animated overlay, now we've got the animated overlay, we can move it around and we can resize it, but then the problem that we've got is there's no sound. And that is where the WebM files come in. So now I'm gonna show you how to create those WebM files using a piece of uh, donationware software. And uh, I urge you to donate to software developers who make their software like that if you find it useful. Uh, but we'll go and do that now and then I'll come on to the black screen issue, the question that I had originally. I'll come on to that at the end. So first of all, let me show you where to grab this software. I'll come out of my uh, demo mode for a moment. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen and show you where to get this software. I'll obviously leave a link to that down in the description, but it's this uh, 
uh, software is called Shutter Encoder and you go to shutterencoder.com. As I say, it is a uh, free software, uh, but without limitations or advertising and it's uh, support through the existence, uh, it continues to exist rather, through uh, the support of donations. So what you're going to do is uh, click on here. Now what I wanted to do was, I do want to actually run through the installation process because there's something that might catch a few of you out if you uh, download it, if you're not familiar with this behavior on uh, Mac OS. So I'm going to go ahead and download the uh, Mac OS version. And here you go, it's going to take you through to this page where you can make a donation, but the going back to the download page is here and it will have actually already downloaded it. Now, the thing that I want to show you is actually when you come to open the download, so it will download it as this uh, shutter encoder package, uh, much like another installation package. So when you uh, double click on that, it should go through the installation process. He says, I'm not actually clicking on it properly. Uh, now there you go, it says, um, Shutter Encoder 15.1 uh, cannot be opened because it is from an unidentified uh, developer. Now this is a system that um, was put in place by uh, Apple uh, a few, um, few Mac OS releases ago, I can't remember exactly when, uh, but it was to stop potential malware. But this is a safe package and there is a, uh, a way to get around this. First of all, we are going to right click on the package and then where it says open, we're actually going to not even press that straight away, but hold down the option key. <laughs> this does sound a little bit convoluted, but this is the way to uh, get around the uh, unidentified developer situation. So we click on open there and then now it has actually opened the package. So I know that that might have uh, caused a bit of confusion for some people. Now this has just popped up a notification that says Mac OS cannot verify the developer of Shutter Encoder 15.1 64-bit package. Uh, are you sure you want to open it? And at this point if we say yes then it will go through with the installation package so I just wanted to actually I've just deleted the app and reinstalled it like this because I wanted to make sure that you were aware of this process and uh, yeah it's not entirely obvious exactly what you would do with that so uh, as I say just to recap when you get the uh, shutter encoder package then right click on it uh, and then go up to where it says open but hold down option <laughs> and then press open it's a bit like some uh, top secret thing turning two keys at once but that's what you have to do and then confirm that you do actually want to open the package and once you've done that you'll be able to go through and you'll be able to go through the installation pro process agree to all of this choose your installation location uh, put in your password just, <laughs> just 50 simple steps and you'll be there but trust me it'll be worth it <laughs> so here it is just installing and in one minute it's done so there we go now what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually open the program uh one second if i can spell spell it right uh, in fact i may need to not do it this way <laughs> i beg your pardon he says uh let me do it another way just one second there we go this should be a lot easier <laughs> Just actually double click on the application. <laughs> now what's going to happen is it's going to actually load up the app and let me get rid of that website. But as I say, I'll leave a link to that in the uh, description. There we go. The application has loaded. I uh, sneakily just paused the uh, recording then until it's had loaded. <laughs> but that is the uh, Shutter Encoder program. And all we're going to do is we're going to come back up here with my little preview window out of the way. Sorry about that. Uh, and all we're going to do is drag that lower third that we want to convert to WebM. We're going to just drag and drop that in here. Now I'm going to go through the very simple settings that we need to be aware of. Uh, thanks again, Doc, for pointing these out. So the first one we need to do is the function is we need to go down to, uh, where is it, VP9. So that one needs to be on VP9. Uh, also make sure that the extension is .webm. And then in here, we're going to turn on two pass and max quality. Those are optional, but will just lead to a better quality output. And then finally, come down to the advanced features. Whoopsie daisy. If we come down to here and, and uh, try that again. 
there we go. <laughs> uh, so come down to here and what we need to do is make sure that we have got the enable alpha channel. The alpha channel is the transparency. So that's what we need to make sure we've got toggled on so that it will actually maintain the uh, transparency that we've got in that movie file. And that is all we need to do. You can actually drag multiple files in here at the same time. So if you've got other ones to uh, look at, you can do those as well. In fact, I'm going to do that because I've got a little test overlay here, which I'm going to use a little bit later. Uh, in the uh, hopefully the troubleshooting section <laughs> so I'll drag that one in as well just to show you that you can do multiple files at the same time and then simply go to this start function and it will convert those and it will take about a minute or two Okay, well, the pause function is coming in quite handy on uh, Ecamm Live today because I've paused it to save you the uh, the time in sitting through all of that. So that has now processed those uh, two files and we've now got the WebM files for the uh, lower third with sound and also this test one, which I'll come to a little bit later. So perhaps now what I can do is come out of screen sharing and then what I'll do is I'll show you in Ecamm Live how we can add these in. So I'll move these over to my other monitor and come into demo mode. So there we go. I've just dragged this uh, folder over to this screen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and add this uh, WebM file as a uh, graphic animated overlay rather <laughs> with sound. And if I just drag it and drop it onto the screen, there we go. That's done exactly what we wanted it to do. We can now uh, move it round. We can resize it and it is actually an overlay on top. Uh, if I wanted, I could almost put it behind my uh, other overlay by coming down to overlays and I'll drag it down here uh, if I unlock my scene rather <laughs> drag it down here like this and then when I click on it it should appear behind my other overlay so you can just stack them the same as other overlays so that is how you would bring it into uh, Ecamm Live and that is how you can easily convert it with uh, Shutter Encoder which I'll leave a link to in the description so that is basically, in a nutshell, the end of the demonstration. And if you found this useful, then please uh, do go ahead and uh, hit that like and subscribe button. Sorry, I didn't mean to go to my end screen. I'm getting too uh, trigger happy. <laughs> go ahead and hit the like and subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications to get notified whenever I do make any more videos. But before I go... I want to come on to that query, which was um, when somebody had created one of these WebM files, um, um, they had actually created it using uh, After Effects and um, were using it in Adobe Premiere as well. I'm not sure exactly where the conversion was happening to WebM from the movie file, uh, but what they were getting was a black screen. And so I'm wondering if it was something like this. So I've done a test version, so I'll drag and drop that one on the screen. And let's see if this looks a little bit familiar because now it's done the animation. There'll be a little bit of a pause while it stays on screen and then it should disappear and go to the final screen. And there we go. We've got the black screen. I couldn't actually get this to um, uh, replicate this with the uh, web uh, shutter encoder itself. But what I wonder might be happening is it may be at the point of export from Keynote. So if I come out of demo mode and just quickly uh, show you what could be the cause of it, it could obviously be something in the settings of uh, Adobe After Effects or Adobe Premiere Pro, depending on what's, uh, where the conversion is happening. And if so, I'm not sure that I can entirely help, but I can say Shutter Encoder does it uh, flawlessly. So uh, if I come over to my screen sharing again, and if I go back over to my keynote slide, which was somewhere, here it is. Um, here I have a slide with my um, lower third on. Now, if I were, if I had started a new presentation and had a another slide in there, then at the point of export, if I didn't export just only this slide, so, and I'm, not saying that this is the cause of the problem, but it is a potential cause, so I'm just uh, highlighting it. So if we go to export and export movie, um, if we've got uh, a couple of slides in there, then we want to make sure that we're only exporting the particular slide in question, which in this case is slide number one, and then we'll just set these to zero. This is the process that I've explained in another video about uh, animated overlay. So I won't go into all the details about exactly what we're doing, but it is important just to ensure that we're only exporting that one particular slide. So then if we click next and export that, then it'll just be the one slide. And incidentally, if I come back to my screen sharing uh, for a moment, no, I've pressed the uh, wrong button. 
<laughs> if we come to this one, uh, these two files, that is the only difference between them. They're both exported from that same Keynote presentation, uh, but one of them has the um, uh, one, only one slide, and the other one has both of those slides, including the blank slide that's been exported. So, as I say, it's just something to think about. Uh, I'm not sure that it is entirely a solution to uh, the issue that the uh, viewer was having. However, um, using Shutter Encoder, as I say, that will actually solve the problem completely anyway. So once again, I hope you have found that useful. And if you have found it useful, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel and uh, turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever I make any new videos. And speaking of which, I've got some more videos coming up right now. So sit back, get a, grab a coffee and enjoy. <laughs> Have a great day.